So the first mark, one. What does it mean, first of all, to say the church is one? That means it's unique, right? That means it's singular, that Christ's church, uh, there's no other like it, right? Um, that it is the thing, the one thing, right, that he has made that is totally different from everything else. Keep that in mind, right? Christ instituted one church rather than multiple churches. That's a good thing to think about, right? Even when New Testament letters Paul's writing, he's writing to local church communities, right? He's writing to the church in Corinth. He's writing to the church in Rome. He's writing to the church in Ephesus, right? He's writing to these different group communities, right? In one sense, you could say there are multiple churches, but all these churches are not different, right? They're in different locations, but they're united, right, in Christ with one teaching, right, with one uh, set of values, with one set of sacraments, right? Um, <clears throat> the unity, the oneness, right, is there, even though they're in different locations. That's why they make a canon, an official list of books, of scripture, so that all these different communities in different places have one set of inspired books when they gather together on Sunday in different locations to celebrate the Lord's Supper, right? The breaking of the bread, the Eucharist. Okay? Um, so the oneness, very important. A good way to understand this is that Jesus Christ has not forged multiple ways to salvation, right? Um, there's only one path to, to salvation, and it is through Jesus Christ. Right? Only one path. So only one church that is journeying means to get through Christ to the Father. Right? How? By the Holy Spirit. Where is that found? In the church. Okay? Paul also writes it in one of his letters. He says, oh, you guys, you guys have division among you. There shouldn't be division. Some of you are saying, I was baptized by Apollos, others by Paul, others by blah, 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 blah. He says, forget that. It's all about Christ. Stop making divisions, right? Uh, there's one truth, one God, one salvation, one teaching. Christ intended another way to say it, one shepherd, one flock, right? Just one flock having one shepherd, right? Not multiple flocks, not multiple paths to holiness and to sanctity and to salvation, but he establishes one, right? He doesn't say, follow this teaching or this teaching, right? He says, here is the teaching, here is the way, right? Um, so he doesn't want to cause or start up multiple ways to salvation, right? It doesn't say all of these things are pretty much equal. No, there's one path, right? One flock, one shepherd. He is the shepherd, and he says, right, remember to Peter on the seashore, um, shepherd my flock, right? His one flock still substituting himself as the shepherd with Peter, right? And we get our vicar. Okay, continuing on. What did Christ mean when he said, I am the truth, the life, the way. No one comes to me but the Father. No one comes to the Father but by me. In other words, again, right, Christ is talking about a very important line. Right? I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way to salvation. He is the way. A lot of people get hung up on that and say that the Christ making sacraments, uh, the church making sacraments, even the church doesn't make sacraments, right? Uh, the church saying there's no salvation outside of it, right? The church saying you've got to go through this means. A lot of people get hung up on that and say, well, the church then is setting itself as opposite from Christ. Where Christ says he is the one way to salvation, the one mediator, he is it. And then the church, people want to say, is making up all the stuff saying that it is the way. Right? But that's, again, where you have the mess up. That Christ says he's the way, right? and to get to him, you go through the apostles. right? You unite in the one teaching that they give. Right? You receive the one Holy Spirit through the sacraments that are given in the one community of the church that is established for all people. Right? The four marks, again, of the church are about how we go through Christ, right? why it's called the body of Christ. Okay. So the church is enough. Why is one church enough? Having established the church on earth, Christ gives all people the opportunity to be united to him, one savior of the world, by become part of his body, right? By receiving the Holy Spirit, we are united with Christ, and we become adopted sons of the Father, right? There we go. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, okay? That's what we're called to, right? Um, <clears throat> so the church, why one church is enough? Because he establishes this is the means, right? This is the way to get there. Second meaning of the church is one, 
unity, solidarity of the church. Great way to say it. Our body has no life without the soul. So to the church, the body of Christ has no life without the Holy Spirit. What would it be? Corrupt, dead, man, and that's it, right? Holy Spirit cleanses it, gives it life, makes it divine, right? Three visible ways we see this unity, visible ways, ways that we can look at. Unity of faith, right? The creed, one faith, I believe, right? Unity of worship, gathering together on Sundays and during other liturgies like the sacraments, right? To gather together in worship of God in the same way, unity and leadership, right? Unity and leadership, we're all bound together. Uh, think about Ignatius and how strong he was when he says, how are we united? Just as the Father and the Son are united, so we should be united to our bishop, right, and those under him, right? So remember what Ignatius says, be under your bishop as the Son is obedient to the Father. In other words, right, the leadership that Christ establishes in the church is the means of unity for us to be in Christ and together as one. So what does it mean to say that the unity of the church then will perdure? Well, Christ says the gates of the netherworld will not prevail against you. This idea that the church, Christ's body, will last forever, not because we're awesome, but because the Holy Spirit is with it, because Christ made the promise and divinity right, is something you can trust in. The unity achieved at the beginning of the church's life will never disappear. In other words, right at the very beginning when Christ establishes, there is one teaching, there is one apostolic origin, right? Uh, there is one bit of holiness, right? And it's spreading right, throughout the world. And what this is saying is that that original stuff is not going to totally collapse, right? We may have breaks, we may have corruption, we may have splits, right? Um, but in the end, this original unity by Christ's promise will always remain, right? And that's what the Catholic Church wants to say is it, right? There are break-offs from it, which we need to reunite, but it remains because of Christ's promise.